Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Grace and this video is basically just going to be 10 rapid fire science fiction book recommendations for you guys. The very first one I have for you guys is Nixia by Scott Rankin. Nixia is a pitch, this pitch black element that has been discovered on this alien planet. And it's highly coveted on Earth because you can mold it into a lot of things and it kind of can connect with your mind and like do different things that, like you're thinking. Emmett Atwater is the main character of Nixia and him and this whole other group of young adults get selected to go on this mining expedition to a foreign planet, to this foreign planet in order to mine the element of Nixia. On the way there, they have all these competitions and games. Like the whole time you're rooting for Emmett and you're rooting for everybody because you just end up loving all of these main characters um, that are traveling on this space expedition to get to the planet to mine this element of Nixia. And then the next book in the series, um, Nixia Unleashed, continues on the foreign planet and then it goes on from there. The second book I have for you guys is The Search for Wanla series. The main character's name is Eva and Eva was raised by robots underground in a bunker. This is a middle grade series, so there's lots of pictures. There's her robot um, caregiver trying to do a medical scan on her or something, I think. So one day everything starts going haywire in this bunker and Eva gets out of the bunker, escapes, and goes on a crazy adventure across this crazy alien planet and there's spaceships, there's airships, there's all kinds of alien creatures. It's a fun adventure. And I love Eva, I love her personality. I love her robot caregiver and all the friends that she meets along the way. It is middle grade, okay, but it's definitely worth a good, it's worth the read, for sure. I loved this series and I really connected to it, even reading it as an adult. The next one I have for you guys is Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. Leviathan Wakes follows two main groups of people. You've got Felters, which are people who are raised in space stations in the asteroid belt and on spaceships. And then you have Earthers, which is everybody that was raised on a planet, which is whether it's like Europa or Mars or actual Earth, like anybody who's raised on a surface is called Earthers. And these two groups of people don't get along. Then all of a sudden there's this alien threat that shows up and it forces Belters and Earthers to try and get along and figure out this whole alien situation. This is the first book in the Expanse series and the whole series follows this alien adventure and it's just super fun and wonderful. Lots of spaceship battles going on in this series, lots of spaceships, lots of politics. Um, Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. The very next one I have for you is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Red Rising is a dystopian book in outer space. Basically, it's described as Hunger Games on Mars, pretty much. The world of Red Rising is set into a bunch of different caste systems. Red is like the very lowest caste system and gold is like, I think the highest caste system. Um, Daro is the main character and he is a member of the Red caste system, which is like the, the lowest caste system in this, in this universe, okay? And he has been working his entire life because he believes that he's making a better world, right? However, he realizes near the beginning of the book that he's been lied to and that this better world already exists and he's been lied to and he's been working to create this better world, but it's also being kept from him. So he decides to go on this mission to infiltrate the gold cast, the gold society. And in doing so, he goes to this institute, which is this training school um, for gold society members. And basically it's just a big Hunger Games situation on, on the planet Mars. And craziness ensues because Daro doesn't think really like the gold cast thinks. The way he runs his group and the way he runs his little clan on Mars surface is just completely different from the way any other gold member does it because he's, he doesn't think like a gold member of society. He thinks like a red member of society. And it's just, it's super interesting. And I enjoyed it, I'll accept it. It is very hard hitting. Um, with a lot of just the violence and stuff that happens in this institute school, like, and it kind of, it kind of made me not want to continue reading the book series because it is so graphic and violent. Um, so I actually ended up DNFing the series, even though I really did enjoy the book, despite a lot of the trigger warnings that are in the book that actually kept me from wanting to continue. But I still definitely recommend it because I think a lot of people would be able to look, overlook some of those trigger warnings and some of that graphic violence. And sometimes, um, you know, just because dystopian isn't my thing doesn't mean it's not your thing. So I'm definitely recommending Red Rising by Pierce Brown. 
The next one I have for you is The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. I freaking love this book. Main character's name is Nemesis and she is a diabolic. Diabolics are beings or kind of like clones. They were created and bred like in this big lab in order to bond with one specific person and protect that one person for the rest of their life. So the main character's name is Nemesis and she is a diabolic. And um, her person that she's bonded to, her name is Sidonia. And so Sidonia and Nemesis are like bonded together mentally. Sidonia is a child of a senator. The emperor of the world tries to kidnap Sidonia as a hostage. However, Nemesis poses as Sidonia and ends up going in Sidonia's place as his hostage. Throughout the whole book, Nemesis starts realizing that maybe she's more human than she was led to believe. And Nemesis actually starts finding her humanity throughout the book. And that journey that Nemesis goes on from starting out as like this diabolic, kind of very clone-like, robotic, sort of mental thinking of like, I have one mission in life and one mission only, and this is what it is, I have to protect Sidonia, to like, wow, maybe I have my own hopes and dreams. Like even like by the end of the book, and it's just such a fun character arc and journey to watch Nemesis go on, and I absolutely love this book. Armada of Ironus Klein is the very next one I have for you guys. Zach Lightman, right? Yes. Zach Lightman is a gamer, and he's been playing this one game his whole life called Armada. And he is one of like the top ranked players in this game of Armada. Then one day, all of a sudden, he starts seeing spaceships from the Armada video game going through the sky in real life over his high school. And he starts freaking out, thinking he's having a mental breakdown, but he's not having a mental breakdown and it's all real, and the game was real, and he ends up fighting aliens in outer space, on the moon, all kinds of crazy stuff happens. Zack is in for like the destiny of his lifetime, being one of the top Armada players in the world. I can't even handle the Star Wars references, the Star Trek references, just, there's so many of them, it's just amazing. And like, if you're like a super nerd like me, you're going to absolutely love this book. Next one, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Rosemary Harper is the main character and she joins the crew of the Wayfarer, which is that spaceship right there. And as she, she's kind of on the run from some things in her past and so she joins this crew. The Wayfarer is a ship that is designed to tunnel wormholes through outer space. So basically it's just this long road trip journey. There's honestly not much of a solid plot in this book, but it's very, very character driven. And you just love all of these characters by the end of it. And you feel like they're all your best friends. The whole book takes place on a spaceship. And so it's just really cozy, excitement, adventure, and mishaps all happen to this crew. And we're just along for the journey. The next one I have for you is The Disasters by MK England. Space is hard, grab a helmet. The disasters. Basically, there's this group of friends. They all get kicked out of the Space Academy all on the same day. And they bond over getting kicked out on the spaceship on the shuttle as they're all leaving and being transported from the Space Academy. However, as they're being transported away from the Space Academy, the Space Academy gets attacked and taken over by this um, terrorist organization. This group of of people that just got kicked out of the academy has to stop this terrorist organization from taking over the world. Basically, that's the plot of this book. It's pretty cool. I loved it. All the characters are really unique and interesting. Very spaceshipy, outer space stuff going on. It's another one of those like spaceship crews, friends bonding over a spaceship kind of books and also taking down terrorist organizations and stopping evil in the world. So anyway, The Disasters by M.K. England. Space is hard, grab a helmet. Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. <laughs> meet, on the back, it says, meet the squad of your dreams. And then of your dreams is just crossed out. And then on the front, it says, they're not the heroes we wanted, just the ones we could find. And that pretty much, it, that's pretty much this book. There's this squad of misfits 
that that all kind of are like the lowest of the low in this academy and so they all kind of get put together on this team because they're like the bottom of the barrel and nobody wants them on their team so they're basically like the academy rejects and they all get together on this crew and they're all so socially awkward it's so funny and they all have so many issues it's so wonderful i just absolutely love all of these characters um, but then there's this mystery girl named Aurora that they find on this spaceship and she just kind of wakes up and has like these superpowers and she doesn't know what's going on and she can control things with her mind but she doesn't have any memories. They end up on this crazy mission to um, protect Aurora and keep her away from bad guys and from people who want to use her in a bad way. Anyway, so good book. I enjoyed it. It's by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff and... I'm gonna pick up book two whenever it comes out pretty soon. The very last one I have for you guys is Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I feel like most people have probably heard of Illuminae. It is, it is an epistolary style. So basically it is just a whole series of like files and spaceship readouts. And anyway, look at the, look at the front cover of it. Isn't that cool? This is like what the actual cover looks like. Anyway, two main characters are Ezra Mason and Caddy Grant, and they broke up the day before this story starts. There's these two corporations that are at war over this mining planet that Katie and Ezra are living on, and they start attacking it and blowing up everything on the planet, and Katie and Ezra end up on the run, evacuating from this planet, trying to get to the spaceship to get off the planet, and they just get caught in this massive corporation war and all this crossfire and all this crazy stuff going on, and they get stuck together, of course, and they hate each other because they broke up the day before this story started. So it's fun, it's got some romance in it, it's got crazy relationship drama, lots of spaceship stuff going on, crazy AI named Aiden, and all kinds of drama. So there, The Luminae Files by Amy Goffman and Jay Kristoff. There you have it, guys. That was 10 quick, rapid-fire sci-fi book recommendations for you. Hit that like button for me. Also, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. That way I can see more of your face and you can see more of my face and we could be friends. I love you. You're absolutely beautiful. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.